All right, guys, welcome to part 12 of building the Rick and Morty app series. In the last part, we started digging into pagination, basically unlimited scroll to load more data in our grid of characters here. And we've been running into some issues. Um, it does look like we have fixed them. I actually paused the video or ended it towards the end uh, previously. And I didn't actually run the app, but we're going to dig into pagination, make sure it's working appropriately. And if it is, what we'll do is we will continue polishing this stuff. So drop a like down below, give a like and subscribe, and uh, let's, uh, let's continue. So we're going to build and run all of our changes. The last thing that we actually did is we added hashable and equatable to our view model for the character cell. So let's jump into that. And by doing this, we created a more intelligent way, I'm gonna move it down here. We created a more intelligent way to go ahead and check if our collection of view models actually contains this, right? So we don't wanna redundantly create the same view model. We wanna make sure that we are keeping all of them without you know, overriding or duplicating any of them. Then in all of this logic down here, what we're doing is we get our basic new data and info. We hang on to the API info we check out the original count, new count, and total. We do some math to get the difference, so total minus new count, that's the starting index. We convert that to basically however many uh, index path objects we want. And then finally, we append to our characters and new results. And by doing that, that'll trigger the new self view models to be created. And here you can see on line number 32, we are in fact making sure that the view model array doesn't already create or include what we just created. And then finally, we say to our uh, dispatch queue main on the main queue, via the delegate, we're gonna pass in these elements and load more characters. And actually you just saw it work here. If we scroll down, we see the spinner, and then we should see some more characters load in like so. And the nice thing about this batch update business and this whole thing is the fact that we retain the spot we are that we are at in the collection view. So um, we expect more elements to load in, but the reason they are not is because we want to also go ahead and uncomment this line, loading more characters to false. And let's go ahead and give a build and run. And let's go ahead and see how many pages of characters we can load. So let's continue down, continue down. So far, so good. And actually, this is looking really nice. Uh, there are literally tons and tons of characters. So it does appear that we were able to go ahead and actually build out pagination in the extent of the prior video. So I'm just kind of curious to know like how many more pages there are. I think there's like 30 or 40, so I'm not gonna waste everyone's time. Let's get more creative and build out some more functionality. So right now, one thing that we are doing is every single time that we scroll down uh, and we come across a new cell, we are actually fetching uh, some new image data for each image. And I had mentioned a while ago, and let's actually clean up some of these prints because we don't actually need them. So when, one thing I mentioned a while ago is that it would be nice, just gonna see where else I've got prints in here, it would be nice if we had a dedicated uh, image loader, some type of object. I'm gonna also get rid of uh, in the RM service, the print that I added here previously. But it would be nice if we had an image loader that would handle maybe in-memory caching of images. So let's actually build that out. So if you recall in our view model for our collection view cell, we had built out a function to fetch the image contents. And I actually wrote a to do for myself here to abstract this to its own function as well as add some caching. So we're gonna open up this managers folder and we're gonna create our very first manager. It's gonna be a Swift file and this is going to be image manager. You can also call it image loader. You can call it whatever you really want but just give it a name that's you know descriptive. So we're gonna create a file class. It's going to be a image loader. We're gonna access it via a singleton. All right, image loader like so, and we're gonna privatize the initializer. This should all look really familiar. This is how the uh, RM service is set up. And it just dawned on me that I forgot to prefix this with RM, so let me do that. RM for Rick and Morty. All righty. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to, let me actually update this here as well. 
what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this functionality here for fetching the contents of a uh, URL, getting the image from it and returning it, I'm gonna toss it onto the image loader. And you'll see why in a moment. So obviously reusability is a big uh, benefit here, but we're gonna also int introduce some caching. So we're gonna say download image. We're gonna have a URL. And we'll just literally copy and paste everything inside of here. And in the completion, what we're going to do is we're gonna have the exact same completion here. We'll say escaping result will give us data or an error in the failure case, otherwise void. And those errors should in fact go away. So this is pretty great. So we now have this reusable function. So let's go here and let's actually use this instead. So what I'll go ahead and do here is I will be able to say, go ahead on the shared instance of this, go ahead and fetch, what did I call it? Download an image with a URL, which will be URL and completion will actually just be this completion handler. We'll just basically pass the whole thing in. So this already dramatically simplifies the code we have to write in multiple places to fetch images. Now let's talk about an even cooler thing. So if we continuously get a request for a given URL, go ahead and get me the data, it's a little silly if we have to get the data over and over, especially in a given app run. So one question that you, know, you might be thinking is, well, why would we need to fetch the image again? And the answer is we don't. It looks like we just crashed there. We'll want to fix that later on, but we don't. But the idea of a collection view is if I scroll down, those cells up above have been dequeued. So when I scroll back up, it actually will need to go ahead and re-download the image with the current way we've built it and assign it. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to use something called an NS cache. Now admittedly, I haven't used an NS cache in literally forever. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this uh, image data cache. And what's nice about a NS cache is it intelligently actually um, handles getting rid of caches in your session, in your memory, in your app session, in case memory is getting low. So we're going to create a NS cache, and you actually need to specify what you want to be saving in here. So if we actually jump into this, you'll see that NS cache does take a key type and an object type that we are saving. So I'm going to go ahead and save in here the key type as a uh, maybe we'll do a NS string, and the object that we're going to go ahead and save is data. So go ahead and compile, and let's see if this is going to yell at me. So it looks like it does yell at me. So NS cache does require data to be a class type, so we can go ahead and make this NS data. So the the constructs of Swift and Objective C get a little tricky here, but we just are going to need the uh, you know Objective C variant of string, so NS string, as well as NS data. So what we can actually do in here now is we can cache the data that we get back with the key being the string of a URL. So we're going to say the key here is going to be url.absolute string as ns string. So that'll give you a key. And then the, uh, the data here, I'll go ahead and call it value, will be data as ns data. And I think you can cast it directly. And we are going to say self dot image cache and there should be let's see if I can find it we want to do yep image data cache we should be able to do a key here equals value and if you go ahead and build and run it looks like we do have an error there so let's see how we actually do this so it's not actually a dictionary what we want to do is set object for key if I'm not mistaken so let's set up the value for the key and that actually looks like is what it was looking for. I'm going to click in here and just make sure that that is the correct function that I was looking for. So we have object for key, set object for key, and remove object for key. So essentially, we are caching in something that's very similar to a dictionary, the data for a given URL. I'm also going to say weak self in here so we don't cause a memory cycle from this cache and this closure. And now what we can do is whenever a request comes in, what we can do is we can say if let, uh, and we can say data inside of here is going to be from our image data cache, and we want to get an object for a particular key, and this is going to be URL. And let me actually move this key thing up here so we don't have to type it again. 
we're going to say try to get an object for this key. And if we're able to get it, we actually have already succeeded and we can just stop, we can return and we can just call the completion handler. We can do success and pass the data. Now, one thing you'll notice is this is going to yell at you because this is NS data. And let's see if we can cast backwards to data. So one important note is NS data is basically the exact same thing as data. Similarly, NS string is the same thing as string. There is some complexity in how those types are bridged between Swift and Objective-C that isn't really valuable to dig into, but I did want to at least call that out. So let's go ahead and add some documentation. So we're going to say get image content with URL and we'll say source URL callback. Awesome, looking good. So we're gonna scroll down, we're gonna scroll up. Everything should be basically identical, but behind the scenes, you're not actually fetching images again. So if I hit this and come up, you'll know that it's reading from the cache. And the way we can verify that is we can say reading from cache, and we can toss in the key. Now you can use the key, you know, you can use any element as the key, but you know, it's, it is subjective. So here we can actually see reading from cache already, which is pretty great. So let's uh, come down here and we are going to continue and we'll continue. And let me now hit the status bar where it's gonna quickly scroll up. And we have a bunch of these cells and they came back into view, but instead of having to actually fetch them again, we're reading from the cache. And that's kind of the virtue of NS cache. You can also write the entire image to disk, but be beware that there are drawbacks of that of reading and writing from disk is expensive. Uh, and when I say expensive, it's you know heavy performance wise. So let's scroll down and I saw a weird crash. So let's see if I can duplicate that crash again and figure out why that was happening. So it looks like we scroll down and then maybe if I scroll up, a weird crash did occur and I do wanna find it and fix it if we can get it to repro. So let me scroll all the way up. It looks like we are not actually hitting that again, but in case I do hit it somewhere along the way, we are going to want to fix it. But if anyone else hits it, feel free to shout out in the comments and we can in fact debug it together. Uh, and maybe that's a good stopping point for this video. We basically covered the image performance caching. So in the upcoming videos, what we're going to do is um, not only work on this detail screen, but we're going to also add a little filter icon here. Maybe we can add like a search bar or something. Haven't quite decided yet. We still need to build out these tabs in their entirety. So lots to do. Stay tuned. Drop a like if you haven't done so yet. Comment for that algorithm. Subscribe. Share the channel. Link me on, or rather at me on LinkedIn. And uh, I'll see you in the next one.